Hello everyone and welcome back to another prayer video on the channel. My name is Antoine and today we have an iPhone 11 that has an activation problem due to an invisible modem firmware aka an existing modem firmware. And now for, for people that has a problem with activating their devices, of course it could be due to a software or a hardware problem. Now for the hardware it could be because you don't have a modem firmware, the same case that we are having today. Or you have a problem with the system configuration in the NAND because it doesn't match with the original ones. Or also it could be due to an NFC problem. But we are going to focus today on the modern firmware because, as I said, this is our problem. And also 99% of the time it is a uh, problem with the board itself. So if you have this problem and you don't have the right tools or you are not a professional enough, I recommend not to start. But because we are a professional repair service, I can confidently say let's begin our work. And now we're going to open the device and see the condition of the board. So let's go. Okay, as always, our basic uh, diagnostics is to look at the board, and from the first look, I would say, oh my goodness, pretty bad looking board, it's obviously been in another repair shop, and they have messed up a lot, a lot of flux, oh shit, a lot of messed up points, I guess, uh, I'm expecting everything from the, from the inside, because, as I said, see a lot of flux between the board and also a lot of soldering balls so I guess now we are going to jump to our preheater and to uh, you know separate the boards so let's go Separated the boards, and as you saw from the fog that came out while separating the boards, because of the big amount of uh, flux melting inside, immediately realizing inside the board is not looking too good. Now, for those people who like to comment and say the main thing is that the phone to work and all the function is back to normal, well, I would like to say that I despise those kind of uh, repair shop technicians, and I mean, I don't want to judge, but when I repair, I'm trying to, you know, do my best to keep it clean and accurate at the same time so that the customer doesn't come back complaining about his phone. And I'm not saying that it didn't happen at all, but it's best to have clean and accurate work. So as you can see, that phone that came from another shop, repair shop, I'm immediately <laughs> trying to clean everything just to see any uh, fault points or something like that. So the first thing that I've noticed in the RF board that the modem has been already uh, removed and maybe rebolted, but also um, recognized the EEPROM has a little crack on it, the, ba the baseband EEPROM, which is a bad thing because the IME and a lot of other data has, has on this chip. I guess it's like 14 kilobytes or something like that. Uh, so I guess we need to begin from the prom itself, removing it, and we're going to try to read the data from it to see if we have a functional EEPROM. Now before we try to remove the EEPROM, we can also uh, read the data using any EEPROM data reader, and today I'm using the GC programmer, uh, GCV1S, 6-in-1 programmer. So you can see I'm pressing read and nothing is happening, so that's why I'm going to connect the GC programmer to my computer and use it uh, with the GC programmer software. Of course, a shout out to GC programmer uh, for the very helpful tool uh, that can read and write almost everything from battery to true tone data to touch ID and of course face ID and all the EU prompts. Now let's just go and show my computer screen here we go and as you can see let's just press detect and I guess nothing is happening yes because I guess we have maybe a damaged EEPROM but again the reason uh, why you need to remove the EEPROM is maybe because you don't have a good connection with the board so that's why we need to check while it uh, solder it on the board if can't read the data then you need to remove the EEPROM and solder a couple of jumpers directly to the EEPROM
So we cleared the IC and connected all the uh, points or the pads to the GC programmer. I'm not going to show you the schematics. It's basically the SCL line, SDA line, PP1V8, and also the ground. It all it's all showing on the programmer itself, and also on the ZXW. So now let's jump to the computer and see if we can read the data. So here we are on our computer, and now let's just we go. This is my camera that's showing that the EEPROM is connected to the GC V1S programmer, and here we are using it using the GC programmer software. And now, as you can see, we can detect, uh, detect, sorry, detect the EEPROM. I'm trying to repair the EEPROM so we can detect it, but there is nothing on the uh, data sheet, which means that it. Uh, it can detect the EEPROM, but there is nothing inside it, no data inside it at all. So detect, read, absolutely nothing. So I guess that from the broken surface of the IC itself, the data has been damaged and the IC has been damaged. So you can just detect the EEPROM and that's it. As you can see, the, also the note is... Uh, the save note or the save data is empty. That means that there is no data in the EEPROM itself. Yeah, that's very unfortunate. I guess the phone... Uh, yeah, that's very, very unfortunate. I guess... Uh, I don't know. There's nowhere to go with this phone it will not have a modern phone murder to damage the prom which is a bad thing considering that you cannot activate the device therefore you cannot use it anymore i don't know if it's the repair service before that uh, fucked the prom while removing it uh, while removing the baseband sorry uh, or the phone had a very bad and huge impact but if it was an impact it will not be the prom itself only uh, Again, I'm not judging, I'm just showing the truth and I always will be comfortable sharing and showing how I work. But if you can learn anything from this video, it's just please don't take your phones to unknown unprofessional services because there is a big chance that you will receive your phone with a bad service. So just keep in mind where are you taking your phone to. So uh, I guess that's it for this video. Very unfortunate that we cannot fix this phone anymore. So this one will go to... Um, I don't know, we we'll call it in, uh, in Ukrainian Tsventer. You can translate the, the word, I will put it in the video. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if the video was helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for additional content in the future. Uh, stay safe and have a good day. And uh, of course, Happy New Year. And we'll catch you guys in another repair video. Peace out.